Okay, and now that we're all recording, time to watch the wonderful text scroll that says spoilers, 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 spoilers. Why does it keep saying the word spoilers? Oh, we're going to be talking about Star Wars The Force Awakens. That's why this text scroll is all the words spoilers in different fonts. Yes. At least we're not the last people on the planet to see it. <laughs> Yeah, but apparently it was irrelevant by the time I went in. Hey guys, I watched Star Wars in my chat room. I visit all the time. And they went, oh yeah, that's last year. I'm like, dudes, that was two days ago. <laughs> I know. I wanted to smack them on your behalf, but you didn't let me at the keyboard. <laughs> if you can't tell yet, we're doing Star Wars. But here's our intro. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Star Wars. Episode 7, The Force Awakens. And this is our thoughts on Star Wars. Episode 7, A New Hope, Take 2. Nice. <laughs> well, I think that pretty much sums up her feelings about it. <laughs> what? I enjoyed it. It hit a lot of nostalgia buttons, but that was the biggest one. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely an enjoyable movie. The pacing was wonderful on it. I think it's the best paced of the movies overall. Very quick, getting to the points real quickly, lots of good characters, good introduction of the new characters, nice introduction of some of the older characters. Good use of the older characters. Harrison Ford did a great job. Very on solo. <laughs> <laughs> also, fun fact, apparently that was the first time ever he's ever used Chewie's crossbow energy bolt gun thingy. <laughs> would you ever try to take a weapon from a Wookiee? No, and I would never play chess with him either. <laughs> exactly. Nice imagery right after the first credit crawl, where the new Death, not Death, Death Star, new Star Destroyer thing just goes right across the planet, slowly darkening the entire screen, except for this little tiny sliver of light where the ships that actually have our new good guy, who's actually a stormtrooper, comes out of it. So that's kind of a nice symbolism there. And a good way to um, mark him as well, so we can keep track of him, since you know, everyone's wearing the same armor. Friend gets shot. Blood mark on face. I am a different stormtrooper. <laughs> I know. I was going, oh, that's the special Pokemon this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that Pokemon? <laughs> well, you remember, you know, Zubat got a scarf. One had a Band-Aid. One had, like, a little headband. Anytime you're dealing with a bunch of the same Pokemon, you have to mark one as different so we can tell which one we actually are supposed to be caring about. <laughs> like in the first Pokemon movie, how all the clones had something different about their patterns. Mm-hmm. Now back to Star Wars. Every time I say that one, I see, like, the big da -da music kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Nice use of practical and computer-generated effects. Yes, excellent effects. So the question is now, in 25, 30 years, will it look dated? Because the current generation looks back at original Star Wars and is like, wow, those effects are so dated. <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard to make timeless CG effects right now. We're getting close, I think. Especially when it's used minimally. Uh, minimally. And in just the right ways, like, you'd be surprised at how many of Disney's cartoons, especially the ones you're like, that has CG in it, actually have CG in it. Like, The Rescuers Down Under and Emperor's New Groove. There was actually a lot of, like, CG assists in both of those animated movies. Mm -hmm. But it blended very well. And now back to Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're doing comparisons. Mm -hmm. Nice, strong female character, lead female character. I'll eventually remember the names here, folks. <laughs> 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 the only name I'm remembering it now is BB-8. <laughs> He's the R2-D2 of this movie. Mm -hmm. But, by the way, her name is Ray. Oh, yeah. And that reminded me of a quick little um, Easter egg that's in the scene where she's putting on the helmet outside of her jury-rigged home. There's some symbols on the side of her helmet that actually spell out the word Ray. Cool. And people are theorizing that it has to do with where she got her name and her mother, which may actually be the person Luke Skywalker ended up with. Whether or not he got married to her, we don't know. Especially if 
Skywalker followed the rules of Jedi, he wasn't supposed to get married, fall in love, or whatsoever. Because <laughs> Jedi is supposed to be like priests and monks. No emotions! Yes, but how are you supposed to get the next generation of Jedi if it's something that's in the blood and the Jedi aren't mating? <laughs> uh, apparently it boils down to attachment. <laughs> If you get attached to something that thing gets ripped away from you, you can have bad emotions like anger and hate. Though I think anger and hate are redundant there, so you know what I mean. Mm, no, anger and hate are definitely two different emotions. I thought they were like just different levels of the same emotion. No, you get angry when Starbucks screws up your order. You hate it when the government screws up something. <laughs> so, what are some points you'd like to go over? Well, I really like when we first saw Rey doing her scavenger work. You know, the whole lift and what she was up to and all of the hard work she does. You know, here is a woman who is self-sufficient. And that reminds me of, why do you keep grabbing my hand? <laughs> yeah, well, if I was Finn, I would be a little clingy too. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh. poor Finn. He's like, I'm just trying to help people. Why do I keep needing to be rescued? <laughs> Also, I'm a coward. I suck. Also, nice bait and switch there of, this guy might be our new Jedi, but nope. <laughs> <laughs> I need to check the cannon on lightsabers, though, because he was able to use the lightsaber. And I thought lightsabers were specifically a Jedi-powered weapon, not just, oh, Jedis are the only ones who bother with these. Everybody else uses guns like reasonable people. Well, I think it depends on which canon you're going for, the extended universe that no longer valid thanks to Disney, or if you're going by what they've said in the movies. And so far, the only thing that seems to indicate that lightsabers are can only be used by Jedi isn't really that they can only be used by Jedi, that they can only be manufactured by Jedi um, because of the process you have to get to be able to manufacture it. Otherwise, the lightsaber can be used by anyone. It's just your reflexes make it so it's less likely for you to get cut slashed chopped up by you wielding your own lightsaber well we'll see what happens in episode nine because that could have either been a hint or that was just finn grabbing the nearest weapon or he has latent jedi powers we do not know <laughs> we don't know much about finn other than he was brainwashed his entire life and then escaped and overall he seems like a pretty decent guy uh, just not very good at anything because he was brainwashed and trained as a stormtrooper for most of his life. And apparently, for most of that time, he was a janitor. Mm -hmm. Though, that does explain why he knows so much about the facilities, because janitors have to go places where normal people don't. Mm -hmm. So it's actually very handy for knowing the schematics of things. My question is, if he spent most of his time in sanitation, why did they ever bump him over to military and take him on this very important killing spree. Maybe we'll find out in episode 8, which is like, I think 2017 something? <laughs> of course, there is supposed to be a Star Wars side canon movie or whatever coming out this year, because apparently they're doing like a Star Wars movie of some sort every year. It's just not main story. Yeah, uh, I think it's Rogue something or other. Actually looks like it may be interesting, just not epic. And I really like the interactions between all the characters, especially um, between Han Solo and Rey. There's that great scene where, I don't need this gun. I can take care of myself. I know you can take care of yourself. That's why I'm giving you the gun. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of poor Han Solo, just to give one more warning. Spoilers! <laughs> if you've gotten this far into this. And haven't realized by now that there's spoilers, it's your own fault. Yeah, that scene where Han Solo dies i was like ah i i yeah hansel is gonna die here i pretty much knew that the moment he stopped and looked out at kylo ren or ben solo mm -hmm. like that exact moment was like yeah he's going to die i'm like please don't die please don't die please don't die oh the light's turning red yep he's dead <laughs> yeah i was like mm, definitely dying here though you pointed out we have a slight possibility that he's not dead since he fell, and falling is something that people tend to be able to survive in the Star Wars universe. 
you know, Paul was blown clear of their ship crash, and he survived, but, you know, Hans was stabbed by a lightsaber. I'm kind of in favor of Hans is dead, not in favor as in I wanted Han Solo to die, but in that the evidence supports it. Mm -hmm. Especially since, if I remember that scene even now, he was falling down into what I believe is the energy that was being built up by the sun to be dispersed out into the weapon. Even if it wasn't, in order for him to survive, someone would have had to have found his body, provide immediate medical treatment, and get him off of the newfangled Death Star equivalent before it exploded. And it's not just wishful thinking that I'm like, you know, we might see Han Solo again. It's because Han Solo kind of took over the Obi-Wan Kenobi mentor role in this movie. And we saw him again thanks to the whole Force thing. So... Does that mean we're going to see him in some capacity in the next movies? Or are we going to just do it through flashbacks? Or what? Could be any of the above, all of the above, or none of the above. Because Kylo Ren could have flashbacks and Rey could have force visions. Or we could do a flashback where Luke is talking about something and we, and we get footage of that, as it were. If you notice, we're not really nitpicking the story too much. Though I'm pretty sure Ember could. <laughs> It's, well, mostly I intend to draw a ridiculous number of parallels. My main nitpick is if they made it any more obvious that Kylo Ren was Han Solo and Leia's son, he would have been wearing a name tag that said, Hi, I'm Han Solo and Leia's son. <laughs> uh, number one, dad. Okay. <laughs> I just saw him handing it like one of those number one dad coffee mugs to Han Solo. And there's definitely a lot of interesting stuff going on. Like, I'm curious about, okay, this new Emperor-like figure. Is he really that big? Or is that just the whole hologram thing? Is he actually really small? What caused that facial damage? What actually happened with the whole Kylo Ren going evil thing? Also, one of the theories I've been hearing about is we might get Kylo Ren turning good and Rey turning evil and Kylo Ren actually be being the hero at the end. <laughs> Entirely possible because, you know, Darth Vader re turned good at the end and was a hero figure in that he protected his son from the Emperor. But so far, the Supreme Leader doesn't show any inclination to be on sight. So we don't know where he's hiding out and what he's like. Sounds like he's a dark Jedi. Sorry, I'm not a big fan of the phrase Sith. <laughs> I also like the touches of how they showed how young he was without him actually taking off his helmet by basically him throwing very juvenile temper tantrums. Yeah, Vader would have killed that guy. No, Kylo Ren goes, I'm going to destroy all of his equipment. <laughs> oh, and another thing that was pointed out to me is they actually showed that Kylo Ren, to make himself feel more like a dark Jedi, or Sith for those people out there prefer that, um, actually puts himself into physical pain a lot. Like, it actually showed how heavy his helmet was on multiple occasions. And during the lightsaber fight with Rey and Finn, he kept punching the laser blast wound that Chewie gave him. It's because he's still fighting with the whole, am I a good guy? Am I a bad guy? I know I just killed my dad, but I'm still... <laughs> yes, well, he even says it when he's in private in his room. I feel it, the call of the light. He's not really a dark Jedi. He wants to be a dark Jedi because he thinks the dark side is more powerful. He's just an emo poser. <laughs> oh. And yes, I know we're going to get hate mail now because I called Kylo Ren a poser and I called him emo. <laughs> I just suddenly saw him with piercing and dyed hair going, you, if you need me, I'll be in my room. <laughs> well, he has the mask, you know, and he definitely has the angst going. At least it's not the angst of, what do I do with my powers? Should I be a good guy or should I be a bad guy? <laughs> the biggest flaw in the Heroes TV series. You, you have powers. It's like, are you good? Are you bad? Or are you indifferent? If you're good, go be a hero. If you're bad, go be a villain. If you're indifferent, selfishly use your powers for yourself. How difficult a choice is this? <laughs> uh, 
I just got this wonderful image of me going, Damn it, Amber. You went for the dark side, didn't you? It's funner over here. I know they have great cookies too, but... <laughs> I kind of picked the light side, so we're going to have to fight now. And you're probably going to win. <laughs> yeah, kind of. You really should have thought about that before you picked teams. I know, right? <laughs> but hey, I got this cool keychain. <laughs> Unless it's a magic MacGuffin, you're screwed. I don't know, it's kind of sparkly when I hold it up to the light. <laughs> like, ah, the light! <laughs> Back to the movie. Mm -hmm. Alright, shall I go into my list of ridiculous parallels? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, droids, BB-8 and R2-D2. Both very important, carrying critical information sent on secret missions of vital importance. Also, both incredibly loyal. My goodness! How the heck do you earn droid loyalty? Because it is apparently an awesome thing to have. Alright, R2-D2 and BB-8 both end up on desert worlds. Their first positive contact on those desert worlds is with the, first, the future Jedi of their respective generation. Difference is R2-D2 tries to run off because his specific goal is to get to Ben Kenobi, where BB-8 stays because He's waiting for Paul. Mm hmm Which we haven't mentioned yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul's missing for most of the movie. Mm-hmm. And apparently he might have some force powers too because he's a freaking good pilot. He's a triple ace from what we can figure from the one scene in the movie where we saw him actually fighting in his ship. Yeah. All right. And getting to Paul and Paul's rescue, we have, you know, someone who we are first led to think is disguised as a stormtrooper because we see Finn take his helmet off, off stage, you know, and say off stage or off screen, but facing the camera. And if we are going with prequel canon, all stormtroopers are clones and shouldn't look anything like Finn. So we have the whole, hmm, imposter stormtrooper rescuing someone. Mm, though that does get explained later of that most stormtroopers now are actually kidnapped young people trained up to be stormtroopers and not clones. Yes, probably less expensive that way. Genetic modification versus kidnapping. Just saying. And skip way ahead on my parallels because talking about Finn as a stormtrooper made me think of it. Hmm, the mention of, oh, the garbage disposals. That's an excellent place to put someone. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me, that particular stormtrooper slash general, um, that armor is actually supposed to be reminiscent of the, I think they're called capital ships in the prequels, you know, the really shiny ships. That's what the armor is supposed to be made out of, the materials of that kind of ship. Okay. I, I have erased the majority of my prequel memories. <laughs> Jedi mind trick. <laughs> On myself, I must forget these movies. Please continue. Mm-hmm. Uh, the resilient prisoners resisting torture. We have two examples of this in episode 7 because we have Paul holding out for a really long time and we have Rey actually managing to turn the Jedi mind powers back onto Kylo Ren. Leia did an excellent job resisting um, interrogation techniques. Oh, and let's go with one of the most classic parallels. Bar scene! <laughs> Also, another fun fact, um, apparently Kylo is an anagram for mixing Han and Luke together. Or Han and Solo. I can't remember which. It was, it was basically mixing two of the characters' names together or um, the Solo name together. Mm, well, you take the K from Luke because you need a K for Kylo. But if mm. you switch out the K for an S, Kylo becomes Silo, which if you adjust the pronunciation, is solo. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and yes, I really like that bar scene. There's actually another Easter egg in that bar scene of this wolf guy that was in the um that was edited out in future releases of the episode um out of episode four and the modifications that Lucas did. Because apparently there was some weird thing going on with the guy who played the wolf creature. And this is why I can never get rid of my VHS tapes. <laughs> uh, though there are rumors that um, 
Disney may be working on getting high quality versions of the original trilogy, you know, the unedited versions. As if Disney doesn't already have enough of my money. <laughs> All right, continuing parallels. So, yes, Lux, I have more. <laughs> Not that I mind. <laughs> the death of a mentor character to the Jedi at the hands of a dark Jedi taking place in front of the trainee Jedi. Obi-Wan Kenobi being struck down by Darth Vader in front of Luke, and Kylo Ren taking out Han Solo in front of Rey. Well, Rey and Finn. Yes, but in terms of the parallel, Rey is the important one. And jump ahead to the end of the movie, the parallel of the young Jedi having to go to an isolated planet to seek out a senior Jedi for training. Mm. Is that all of your parallels? All the ones I can remember at the moment. Oh, the aftermath of the celebration after the horrible death weapon is destroyed. Everyone's celebrating like they have this huge victory, but we know in the original trilogy it takes two more movies to take out the oppressive empire. Not that not getting obliterated isn't worth celebrating, but we see Rey and Leia both being much more serious, which is not a parallel, but it is a nice contrast. We have a bunch of people celebrating this temporary victory and the immediate fact that they're still alive, where Rey and Leia are dealing with a personal loss and also looking forward at the path that they still have to travel because both of them know that things aren't finished. And speaking of Leia, um, there was a whole scene that was, well, a, a whole story arc, I should say, that was edited out for time reasons for Leia. Leia actually had a whole story arc where she was actually um, one of the people who was warning that the Empire wasn't finished yet, that these people that are calling themselves the Brotherhoods are the remnants of the Empire building back up to come and attack us again. And no one was listening to them because the new Senate was trying to go, no, 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 everything's fine. The, the, the Empire is defeated. Everything's fine. And Leia was like, no, no, we need to do something about these guys. Guys, come on. So she was kind of kicked out of the Senate. And that's why we have this separate section of rebels that she's leading. Well, maybe that's something that will be touched on in the intermediate film, because it is focusing more on the rebels. And I heard it's actually covered in the novelization version of the movie. Mm. Oh, and then quick fun fact. The green um, food that we see Ray eating when they meet with um, March is actually real food that you can buy at the grocery store. It's just a very unusual um, hybrid vegetable. Actually looks exactly hmm. like that if you just cut it up and put it in a bowl. <laughs> Interesting. Huh. So anything else we want to go over? Well, we haven't even touched on finally a lightsaber with a crossbar on it, considering that the lightsaber fighters fight in more of a broadsword style even though the lightsaber is basically a stick, which is more of a rapier style. And they also show how useful the crossbar can be in a battle in terms of inflicting additional damage, not just protecting as a traditional crossguard, but actually providing additional attack options. Oh, speaking of sword styles... If you noticed, everyone's kind of fighting slightly clunky again and not doing oh, the flips and everything. That's because Luke was never taught the acrobatics of the more advanced forms of Jedi sword fighting styles. So that's all he could pass on to Kylo Ren is what he was taught. And neither Finn or Rey got taught anything about how to really use a lightsaber. They're just kind of going by instinct of like, I swing this thing and stab it at another guy, right? <laughs> Yeah, because acrobatics are usually not your first instinctual reaction, unless you are a parkour master. But in that case, go watch Divergent, which I've heard is terrible, but the parkour is pretty good. <laughs> Another interesting fact I have heard about Kylo Ren's lightsaber is if you look at the lightsaber closely, you actually see that the bar itself, the light, the actual saber part, I should say, 
is actually kind of fluctuating in like waves and stuff like that to give it a slightly what I, what you would call a jagged appearance and apparently that's because of the type of crystal he used in the base of the lightsaber is slightly unstable so it gives kind of a unstable appearance to the blade itself and they wanted to do that to make it even more evil and distinguish it more from the good guy's lightsaber well it could also be indicative of his conflicting emotions and that's reflected in how he designed his lightsaber the conflict within himself between the light and the dark so that even his lightsaber has fluctuations i think another thing with the lightsaber battles this time they made an excellent showing of how hot those things are and how a wound basically instantly cauterizes because they're so freaking hot all i know is this movie was very interesting and very enjoyable and i'm glad we got to see it in the theaters <laughs> likewise and i'm glad that my nitpicking self mostly stayed quiet during the movie <laughs> it was just puzzling things out and trying to trace the story arc drawing on previous star wars knowledge which is probably why I knew in like five seconds that Kylo Ren was Hans and Leia's son and that it's very likely that Rey is Luke's biological daughter. Especially with the reaction he gave at the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. Also the reaction of Luke's lightsaber to Rey. Some people are suggesting that that's a force power that um, it's kind of like um, divining. You can touch something and get... Well, not really divining, but you can touch an object and get the history of the object by just touching it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what that's called other than just reading an object. But the fact that it called to her so strongly. People are also saying that's a nice parallel um, with the King Arthur story. Well, yeah. But if it is true, this makes for a very fun family matchup as the cousins are having to go at each other because if Rey is Luke's daughter, then Kylo and Rey are cousins. A lot of interesting stuff in this movie, and I can't wait for the next one. Well, I should say the next episode. The next movie is actually sometime this year, so. <laughs> yes, and I can wait because I would just as soon they take their time on it and do a good job. Well, I've heard that it's actually been delayed. The next actual episode's been delayed back a little bit. I'm not surprised. I heard there uh, were issues on the set and actually some like negligence lawsuits going on over injuries. But I don't know if that was for episode 7 or episode 8 or just in general. Hmm. I haven't heard that myself. So, uh, want to wrap things up with your final thoughts on the movie? <laughs> Very much enjoyed it. There's a ton of parallels between it and items in the original trilogy, which was probably deliberate both to evoke nostalgia and to reassure the fans that this wasn't going to be like the prequels. And I think overall they've done a pretty good job of reassuring the fans. Is I wasn't even really particularly interested in going to see the movie. I mean, I managed to avoid trailers and spoilers, but I am glad that we saw it, and I am looking forward to future installments. Yeah, I wasn't planning on seeing it in the theaters because I, you know, it's like the time and the extra cost. And the fact that you live in a town without a movie theater? Come on, Lux. <laughs> well, we're going to be getting one soon, we hope. Yes, people, I live in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, it was nice I happened to... um be in the right place at the right time and I actually had several opportunities lined up that if I didn't get a chance to see it with Ember I actually may have gotten a chance to see it with another friend of mine so that was good so it looks like I may have been destined to see this movie <laughs> except for the part where I punched you in the arm for speaking aloud it was only once and I caught myself <laughs> uh, and just to let people know it was the scene where the Millennium Falcon crashes into the Death Star, giant Death Star clone. I can't remember exactly what I said, but it was basically like, any landing you can get away from. Whoops! <laughs> well, they won't be doing that again, or something along those lines. Uh. I don't remember what he said either. I just remember my sense of outrage and my need to punch him in the shoulder to make him shut up. So, I really enjoyed the movie. It was definitely very Star Wars feeling. 
it, which is nice considering the prequels. <laughs> ah, and definitely can't wait to see the next movies. And this has been our thoughts on Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and or leaving a friendly comment below. Want to know more of what's going on? You can check Lux out on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Really like Lux's art? And would like some high quality versions or maybe some of your own? He is currently accepting commissions and also has a Patreon. All links in the description.